back to Steve's question about what is it functionally that a regional plan should actually do, and what should we be doing um, to make that happen. Um, I think we have a tendency as planners to think of plans as our final products, um, as opposed to what the plans actually produce in the communities that we want to create. Um, I, my question is really, in the next round of one, a plan Bay Area or the, or the round after that perhaps, is there an opportunity to talk about actually implementing in a more forceful way the policies and the plans, um, particularly on the issue of housing production? My answer would be I hope so. Uh, and I think you're right, John, that it's more likely to be the next one than this one. Miriam and Ken keep repeating the mantra that this is a minor update, because I think they hope if they say it often enough, it'll be true. Um, we just had a three hour meeting this morning about a minor update. Uh, but we are going to try with this plan, uh, this second cycle, uh, really to just make some minor improvements on the first. But I think the third, as I mentioned earlier, probably with much more aggressive greenhouse gas targets, um, I do think that's the time when we ought to be doing some rethinking. And as you know, our approach to date uh, with Plan Bay Area and the, you know, the, the funding counterpart that we created to go along with it was the One Bay Area Grant Program. And that is an incentive program or a reward program, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, and the basic bargain, uh, as I would describe it, is we have been hearing for years from our local transportation partners that they were tired of all the strings we put on the money we gave them. We had a regional bike program. We had a TLC program. We had a local road repair program. So their plea to us was, just give us the block grant and be done with it. Um, and our response was, well, what if you had a condition that everyone to receive these funds, any jurisdiction, has to have a certified housing element? And what if they had to have a complete streets policy? And what if you had to spend a certain percentage of all the money we send to your county in the priority development areas that your municipalities recommended in the first place? And that's where I think the bargain ended up. Now, I think you've probably, some of you, uh, I know because you've been at our meetings, uh, there is always such a thing as too much of a good idea. Um, and I think the debate we're having now is, could we push OBAG to address more than just those issues? Should it have some kind of requirement on displacement and anti-displacement measures? Should it address this policy question that policy question. And I do worry that at some point, uh, the carrot just becomes a stick painted orange. And uh, that's not the relationship we want to have with local government. We want it to be a partnership. Uh, we want to be helpful. We want to pay for things uh, that get the plan implemented. Uh, and I think we're really going to need all of your help to strike the right balance. 